Okay, quick story. Uh, put aside banking, quick story about this uh, cop city. This is interesting because I've been complaining forever about a police training and, and police really need to get better, better trained and they need to be more efficacious and they need to be able to deal with uh, violent situations much better than they actually do. I think police shootings are ridiculous. The amount of violence that police use in situations where it's unnecessary is ridiculous. Um, and, and then just, just what appears to be police losing it, losing their cool and responding emotionally to situations, uh, all things that can be dealt with with proper training. And anyway, in Atlanta, uh, they have pretty run-down training facilities. Uh, I'm not sure it's about the facilities at the end of the day. It's about the content of the training. But anyway, uh, they have run-down training facilities, and for years now, they have wanted to upgrade their training quality uh, and, and, and both quality and, and the facilities. So uh, about uh, seven years ago, the, 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 the nonprofit, the Atlanta Police Foundation, was tasked with raising money in order to do this, um, to build a new training facility. And they have. They, they found a piece of land, and they are in the process of, of building an 85-acre um, 85 uh, training facility, state-of-the-art, uh, that will replace the, the decaying uh, facility uh, that exists right now. And you think people would be happy about this, given the increase in violence uh, in America, given uh, the fact that we clearly see that police are not trained, given the horrible, you know, we just saw another report today, uh, yesterday or the other day about uh, one of the police departments and, and, and how awful they were uh, uh, and how, uh, how badly trained they are and how under-resourced they are and so on. Um, so the foundation basically raised $60 million, and, and uh, the city is going to pitch in $30 million, and they're going to spend $90 million on this training facility. Well, uh, you know, th this came to public comment in the city council, and there was a lot of negativity about it, uh, a lot of kind of leftists who are defund the police types, Antifa types, anti-police types spoke up against it, but the city council decided to green light it anyway because... We know that the people who show up at these hearings rarely reflect the actual sentiment in the community. And given the rise in crime, it is time to do this. In September 2021, uh, this project is, was green-lighted. Since then, uh, the, op uh, the opposition has, has uh, uh, you know, demonstrated outside. They have vandalized machines. They have sabotaged equipment. Um, in January, in an attempt to clear the protest sites, police shot and killed an environmentalist activist um, uh, who had allegedly shot and injured a, a cop, uh, even though the activist claimed that's not true. Uh, and then um, days later, about 100 uh, people descended on downtown Atlanta in protest of the killing, um, and some of them dressed in black, dressed in Antifa black. You know, they smashed bank windows, they set off fireworks, and they lit a police car on fire. So, you know, the standard uh, uh, practice for uh, Antifa-type uh, riots uh, and, uh, and vandalism and nihilism of, uh, of that brand of, uh, of leftism, right? And this, this is going on, and, and uh, Ultimately, uh, Brian Kemp, the governor of uh, Georgia, declared an emergency, brought in a 1,000 National Guards, and cleared it all up. Now, this last weekend, a group of protesters uh, uh, were protesting the Atlanta the, the Training Center, and uh, they began throwing large rocks, bricks, Molotov cocktails, this is war zone, and fireworks at police officers. They ultimately destroyed multiple pieces of construction equipment by fire and vandalism. Um, no, no one on the police force supposedly was injured, but it, 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 it looked pretty bad. And it looks like, again, a, a group of black clad, um, equipped with riot shields and, and Molotov cocktails and all kinds of other stuff, uh, were really behind the most violent of these activities. So this, again, is Antifa uh, attacking, uh, attacking all of this. Um, it turned out there was a peaceful gathering, and of course Antifa infiltrated that and then used that as a distraction while they went and, and vandalized the equipment and used the more uh, violent means. 23 people were arrested. Um, two of them, uh, let's see, uh, 
21 of them were charged with domestic terrorism. Um, almost all, sorry, all of them were charged with domestic terrorism. 21 of the 23 are not from Georgia. I mean, Tifa brings their people in from wherever they need to. So it's not from Georgia. This is not a Georgia-based, really, protest. Um, 35 people in total have been arrested. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, the charges carry up to 35 years in prison. So these are uh, big uh, charges. Of course, Human Rights Watch and other leftists have criticized the charges. Um, arguing that they're intended to deter protest. They probably are, and they should be deterring protest. Now, bottom line here is I'm glad to see the Atlanta police using uh, forceful tactics against these people. Um, I'm glad that they are charging with domestic terrorism. I'm glad that they'll send them, hopefully send them to jail for a long time. Uh, I think uh, facilities like this and investment in police training is necessary. The defund the police movement has turned out to be not only a massive failure in terms of the rising crime, but also a massive failure in terms of what voters actually want. Uh, it's good to see the Atlanta Police Department investing in more policing. Now, note, Atlanta uh, is, is a democratic city. It's a blue city. In spite of that, Atlanta City Council voted for this training facility. In spite of that, Atlanta City Council is putting real money into this. Um, while Georgia is mostly red, Atlanta is blue. Uh, and, um, you know, this is, this is the kind of conflict that's out there. But what's, what I think is important and interesting is that at the end of the day, the number of people that actually believe in defunding the police, that actually believe in violent riots and protests and anarchy and, and nihilism, the number of people who actually hold those views is very small. Um, they, they don't represent a, a significant number of the population. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's good to see them basically defeated, both in the ballot box in a sense of those kind of candidates being defeated, and by the police when they get violent by arresting them and, and prosecuting them. So it's so good for the police in the circumstances. I think, uh, I think, uh, I, I think we need to stand firmly against violence um, and, uh, and against demonstrations turning into riots. Um, th th there needs to be zero tolerance for rioting, for rioting people, uh, you know, and, and if you're dressed in black and you come to a protest, the assumption should be that you're a troublemaker and, uh, and uh, they should be really watched carefully and, and, and dealt with the slightest sign of intended violence quickly and, uh, and thoroughly. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.